Hello everybody, my name is Ted Leishner and I op operate under the name of Plan B Now. I'm focused on community uh, facilitation of our native pollinators as well as our commercial pollinators. I am here today at uh, Kin Park uh, with the Cowichan Green Community and uh, I, uh, I wanted to help them by setting up a Mason Bee setup. Uh, so to enhance their pollination in their garden and it's also for community education uh, wish we had more groups this year but you know what happened anyway so uh, we're at a part uh, we're at a time of the year where we have to bring in our mason bee uh, blocks be to protect them from parasites um, I set the, this block up uh, in in March um, and uh, I brought, I don't know, 300 mason bees, put them in a little box and let them emerge at the right time. And they just did their thing. And so right now, at the end of the season, I'm very happy. These are my mason bee blocks. And they're set up to be like old, old, old uh, trees. Uh, the only difference is is I have uh, paper inserts uh, that I take out from the back. I'm going to show you how I do that. And it's all basically to keep uh, the mason bees free from uh, pollen mites and, and parasites and this kind of thing. Uh, I'm very fortunate that I got an extra block out of them. People don't realize that the mason bees are way more prolific than, um, than what they think. Uh, you could probably double up their next box. See, what I did was I put them just that box out, two blocks, and I had the emergent box in the middle. And uh, later on in the season, when I saw that the block was getting filled up, they didn't have any nest tunnels to use, I substituted the emergence box with an empty bunch of tubes. And uh, that gave me some extra mason bees and an made the mason bees very happy because they had a lot of babies that carry on their kind in the future. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is we're removing the box, pardon the cane, but it's part of my anatomy now. <laughs> okay, next step. Now that we got the uh, bars out of the way and made it so I can take the blocks off, it is time to put the blocks, which are all filled up with uh, cocoons, which are still developing, by the way. So they're very, very um, fragile. So we have to pick them up and treat them very carefully. We're going to put them into the garden shed to finish their development. Uh, I'm going to show you in a few minutes, we're going to take out uh, one of the tubes and open it up to show you where the development is right now and, uh, and that's very important to realize uh, and that'll show us why the mason bees at this stage are very very uh, very very fragile but they need protection from mason bees okay the next step is I'm going to go over to my cart and I have a special net bag that I'm going to put the mason bee block in and then we're going to put it in uh, and take it to a cool farm shed uh, and it will stay there until we're going to take the mason bee cocoons out of the out of the tubes which is going to be beginning end of October uh, beginning of November when when okay the next step uh, uh, this is a net bag that I purchased from one of the uh, commercial mason bee companies and we simply put it in there and uh, make it secure so parasites can't get in and then uh, we simply take it to where we're going to store uh, the mason bee blocks until uh, into the into the winter time so come March 15th in 2021 we take our mason bee blocks uh, out, which have been cleaned of the mace cocoons. We put them back in our shelter here at Kin Park. We bring in another 300 cocoons and let nature take its course. 
this very special native bee that is uh, providing such uh, benefit to this project and fruit production on the island, generally speaking. It's one of the best pollinators we got. Okay, Laura, want me to talk about the conditions of store mason bee cocoons and nest blocks. Basically, whatever is in uh, a garden shed on any farm, uh, out of the sun, cool, constant temperatures, and that'll take us all the way, uh, all the way to uh, to November. Because usually the garden sheds don't freeze, and so as long as it's above freezing, uh, then. Uh, <clears throat> then the mason bees are going to be okay. In November, we take them out of the tubes, as I said, we clean them up, wash them up, and we put them back in the fridge and keep them cold at a temperature of two to four degrees C with a 60% relative humidity until the springtime when we're ready to put them out. Okay. Uh, the formula for calculating the number of mason bee cocoons you buy for a block is as follows. You need a female mason bee for each tunnel. So there's 60 tunnels here, okay? And you need, um, uh, usually you don't need, uh, you need a few more males. So you need 60 males, so that's 120. And so you gotta put a fudge factor in there because mason bees get uh, preyed upon and, and all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, I, I put about 150 for each block, so I put out, uh, here I put out about 300, uh, uh, I donated to the cause 300 um, cocoons, and the current retail value of one cocoon is $3, and, uh, but as I say, my focus is facilitating gardeners, uh, food production, uh, not in profitability because it's time that we got to start to take care of the earth and taking care of people by giving them what they need uh, give the bees what they need too hello everybody we're going on to the next phase I'm going to show you what's inside one of the tunnels of the mason bee blocks that we've installed here at Kin Park uh, uh, starting way back when in March um, Incidentally, I set one of these uh, demonstration education projects up at Jubilee Community Garden at the Hub, and uh, uh, where I live, which is Duncan Kiwana's Village, and um, everyone has, uh, uh, the Mason Bees have done very well. Pardon me. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, we're at a stage now we're bringing them out of the field and protecting them from parasites and putting them into proper storage until November, uh, late October, November. Uh, so let's see how I set up my mason bee blocks. And um, so what I'm doing now, because I want to show you what's inside one of the tubes, is I'm taking off the, uh, the back of my mason bee blocks uh, which basically there's a gasket and uh, fold back my tubes at the back so it's dark that way the mason bee when she comes to the new tube she sees it dark inside and then she says perfect I'm going to start nesting okay the advantage of all of this stuff is one, uh, it's low cost, anyone can do it. I'm very critical at the high cost of mason bee equipment in the garden centers. Um, it's not really helping getting more and more pollinators up, especially the mason bees. It's not helping uh, to facilitate pollination. More food for our Cowichan Valley uh, for all, all sectors, uh, First Nations and otherwise. So, but anyway, so in November, we're going to harvest the tubes, and we're just checking to see what stage they're at right now. So they pull out very easy, like that. And then I simply take my knife, and uh, Allison Ebbotson, she did, uh, she must have rolled a couple of thousand tubes as part of the project here. Um, and so we just cut the tape, 
and then we get our dish pan and we're going to unroll it okay see how easy that is to unroll see how easy it is to, much easier than those hard uh, cardboard tubes now the black stuff is fresh oh look at that uh, there's a baby mason bees finishing up its life cycle so they're at their end of the larval stage there's five stages egg larva or white worm stage then it goes into the resting pupa stage and finally into uh, the adult the adult stage this here's a um, unused uh, pollen ball okay uh, maybe the egg got, died so the way it works the mother over the season makes little bedrooms and puts one mason bee in each bedroom and then seals it up and then the baby eat, has to eat the rest of pollen and finish its development and then it kind of goes into a resting stage these little there's a little mud walls little mud walls that she puts in between each bedroom uh, in the in the tube and uh, I, I can't uh, I can't save these mason bees but um, they that is basically the stage we're at now so I thought they're they're way more advanced than what I thought and uh, I'm pleased I'm pleased uh, everything's working as it as it should okay uh, next thing I'm talking about mason bees. Uh, I brought along some mason bees to show you uh, what they lo look like as adults. And of course, there's two kinds. There's there's daddy bees and mummy bees. These are these are the male bees. They are smaller, and they have only one purpose, and that's to mate with the mason bees. And then the bigger ones are the uh, the mother mason bees. They do the egg laying and all the work. Uh, they you can't see it very good but they haul their they carry their pollen from the field and flowers on a special brush on their tummy okay and um, I can uh, we probably can't show you that here but um, they're uh, the mason bee is just superbly adapted to living here a thousand years yes people our native bees have been here for 14,000 years supporting Supernatural BC and the food, food production potential for our First Nations, for all our wildlife, and now for our farms uh, here in, the, uh, in 2020.